three new muscle cars versus a classic. Muscle cars are known for being boldly painted, excessively loud, and extremely fast in a straight line. Young individuals wear them as status symbols and older people purchase them to feel more youthful. In addition, they have a particular attitude which makes them quite intriguing and noticeable. They were the hottest automobiles during one of the golden eras of automobile culture. As well as being connected with heavy metal, muscle cars were also seen as emblems of youth, flair, and rebellion against affluent parents. They were both the enthusiast automobiles of the period and means of expressing one's individuality. Let's start with three modern muscle cars. The Dodge Challenger Although it doesn't feel nearly as snappy as a Chevrolet Camaro or Ford Mustang, Dodge's massive muscle vehicle is a blast to drive. The Challenger is the most retro of the bunch, which is understandable given that the design of the current generation dates back to 2008, which harkens back to the Challengers of the early 1970s. This is a large, hefty coupe, and fortunately, there is a wide range of V8 engines available, all of which are more than capable of providing this large coupe with impressive straight-line acceleration, and the SRT Demon is said to accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 2.3 seconds with rollout subtracted. That makes it the seventh quickest production ever. If massive smoky burnouts are your style, the Challenger will fulfill your desires. The standard Challenger is equipped with a V6, but it is the SRT and supercharged Hellcat engines that will send you barreling down the drag strip with reckless and petuosity. The Challenger may only be concerned with sheer acceleration and power, but the ride is surprisingly smooth and comfortable even when you opt for models with a sportier suspension setup. Overall, we like the Challenger, although it is a little out of date. The Ford Mustang for more than 55 years, the Ford Mustang has earned a reputation for delivering exhilarating performance at affordable cost to the ordinary consumer. There have been several upgrades along the way, but the tried and true formula of two doors, plenty of power, and rear wheel drive have remained unchanged through the years. The $27,300 EcoBoost sports a turbocharged line four, which makes 310 horsepower and is Ford's baseline Mustang. Next in the lineup is the Mustang GT, starting at $36,300. It has a naturally aspirated V8 with 460 horsepower, and when equipped with a 10-speed automatic transmission, this 5-liter Mustang can go 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds, although independent testing has recorded even quicker times. The $52,500 Mach 1 is very similar to the GT. It comes standard with several of the optional performance elements on the GT, specially tuned Magnarite adaptive shock absorbers and an optional Mach 1 specific handling package. It also gains 20 horsepower over the regular GT. And at the top of Ford's trim level is the Shelby GT500, listed at $70,300. A 5.2 liter supercharged V8 producing 760 horsepower in a 0.60 time of 3.6 seconds makes this high end muscle car a force to be reckoned with. Overall, the Ford Mustang continues to be our favorite muscle vehicle, surpassing both the Chevy Camaro and the Dodge Challenger. And lastly, the Chevrolet Camaro. The Chevy Camaro is one of three automobiles that keeps the old school muscle car genre alive and well. Along with its major competitors, Dodge Challenger and Ford Mustang, it takes the historic features of the specialist sector and modernizes them for a contemporary audience. Despite having a modern interior and improved handling performance, you can still experience the heart racing acceleration of classic muscle cars today. The Chevy places a strong emphasis on providing a sporty driving experience, to the point that it nearly comes at the expense of the vehicle's everyday drivability. As a result of the vehicle's streamlined design, the windows are short and impair outward sight, and both trunk room and cabin storage are among the lowest in the class, but the Camaro has some of the highest price to performance ratios in the sports car world. The highest trim Camaro, the ZL1 1LE is priced at $69,000 and comes with a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 engine with 650 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque and when equipped with a 10-speed automatic transmission, the ZL1 will accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds and finish the quarter mile in 11.4 seconds at 127 miles per hour. And now a muscle car that is truly classic, the Plymouth Barracuda. The Plymouth Barracuda is a two-door muscle car produced by Plymouth from 1964 to 1974. It is the company's most successful model. First introduced in 1964, the Barracuda is a mid-sized car based on the Chrysler A-body platform. As the pony car class became established and competition increased, Plymouth began to revise the Barracuda's engine options. In 1967, while the 225 cubic inch Slant 6 was still the base engine, the V8 options ranged from the 273 cubic inch 4.5 liter to a seldom ordered 383 cubic inch 
B Big Block, rated at 280 brake horsepower, the latter available only with the Formula S package. The Barracuda was offered as a two-door fastback, notchback, and convertible from 1967 to 1969. In 1968, the 318 cubic inch 5.2-liter LA engine was the smallest V8 available and the new 340 cubic inch 5.6 liter LA 4 barrel was released. The 383 Super Commando engine was upgraded with intake manifold, camshaft, and cylinder heads from the Roadrunner and Super B. But the more restrictive exhaust manifolds is specific to the A-body cars limited its output to 300 brake horsepower. Also, in 1968, Chrysler made approximately 50 fastback Barracudas equipped with a 426 cubic inch 7.0 liter Hemi for super stock drag racing. These cars were assembled by Hearst Performance and featured items such as lightweight Kempor side glass, fiberglass front fenders, hoop scoop, lightweight seats, sound deadener, and other street features such as rear seats omitted. They weren't street legal, but could run the quarter mile in the mid-10s in 1968. The third generation, which was produced from 1970 to 1974, had an entirely new design, and it was offered in both hardtop and convertible body styles. It was dubbed the Cuda and had the 383 with 335 horsepower as a standard engine. Options included the 340 cubic inch 5.6 liter, 290 horsepower AER 6-pack, with triple two-barrel carburetors, a 440 cubic inch 7.2 liter, four-barrel 375 horsepower Super Commando, with a gross rating of 390 horsepower, and the 425 horsepower 426 cubic inch 7.0 liter Hemi. The 440 and Hemi-equipped cars received upgraded suspension components and structural reinforcements to help transfer the power to the road. Three transmissions were offered a three-speed manual, the Torque Flight Automatic, and the Hearst Shifter equipped with four-speed. Sadly, as with other American vehicles of the time, there was a progressive decrease in the Barracuda's performance. To beat increasingly stringent safety and exhaust emission regulations, big block engine options were discontinued. The remaining engines were detuned year by year to reduce exhaust emissions, which also reduced their power output. There was also an increase in weight as bumpers became larger, and starting in 1970, e-body doors were equipped with heavy steel side impact protection beams. Higher fuel prices following the 1973 oil prices and performance car insurance surcharges deterred many buyers as the interest in high-performance cars waned. The demand for pony cars was on the decline. Sales had dropped dramatically after 1970, and while 1973 showed a sales upstick, Barracuda production ended April 1, 1974, 10 years to the day after it had begun. The Barracuda, particularly the 1970-1974 e-body cars, is a collectible car today, with the high-performance versions and convertibles commanding the highest prices. The small number of Barracudas remaining in existence is a result of low buyer interest and low production sales when the vehicles were new. The remaining cars of any condition are rare, and the outstanding examples fetch high appraisal values today. Original Hemi Superstock Barracudas and similarly configured Dodge Darts are now prized collector vehicles with unaltered factory cars commanding high prices. The 1971 Hemi Cuda convertible is now considered one of the most valuable collectible muscle cars. Only 13 were ever built, seven of which were sold domestically. The most recent public sale was at the June 2014 Mecham auction in Seattle, where a blue-on-blue four-speed sold for 3.5 million US dollars. There is a plethora of reasons to appreciate muscle vehicles. These gems accentuate the grace of their driver and give the impression that the owner is fantastic or wealthy. A vintage American muscle automobile may make you the center of attention and the topic of talk wherever you go, so make the most of it. Be prepared to receive several requests for photographs from vehicle enthusiasts and make a large number of new acquaintances. Well, that's it, everyone. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. What's your favorite classic muscle car? Let us know. Bye for now.